Welcome to another episode of Undisrupted with Adam and Carl. Adam, I don't know about you, but right now it seems like everywhere we're getting cold calls and cold emails from vendors all over. They have the word either COVID or CARES or something in them about ways to purchase things from them. I'm curious, have you ever actually bought anything from like one of those vendory spam emails or calls? Guys, those are the worst. I mean, here's my thing. I don't care about them calling me. <laughs> like, if I need something, I'll call you. Or I'll reach out to you. It, it, it's the worst. You know, one thing that's almost worse than the cold call, and I don't know if this has happened to you, but the ones where they just show up. Yeah. I had to show up at my <laughs> office, and it's like, oh, we have a meeting schedule. They'll page me. Hey, uh, Dr. Farrell, you have a meeting schedule with someone. I said, no, I don't. You don't know me. Don't show up here. I mean, I, uh, uh, Outcast said it best. Uh, call before you come. Don't just pop over <laughs> out the blue. Ooh, ooh. Ooh, ooh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and on that note, let me bring in our guest. This is Dr. Tracy Daniel Hardy. She's the director of technology at Gulfport School District in Mississippi. Tracy, what about you? Have you gotten those? Do you, do you feel like there's an increase or an uptick of that during all this? Oh, oh yeah, definitely. And I think if it were not for the pandemic, there would be more just popping up like Adam described. Um, I, I remember a time I'm, I'm, I stepped out of the hall to go to the restroom and there's standing a guy and the receptionist wasn't there. How can I help you? And he said he was looking for Dr. Hardy. And I'm like, oh, crap, I can't get out of this one. <laughs> and I'm like, I have a meeting, but they just show up and I usually don't see them. I have pretty good gatekeepers, but and, and they'll call me by my first name as if we're, you know, mm -hmm. really good friends and we've been chatting. And I'm like, no. Yeah. My best was a rest. I have a restroom story too. It's interesting. There was a, when I worked at a, a former district, I won't name, but <clears throat> we were buying our one-to-one -one devices at the time. And uh, they were from a company that start, that's a fruit company. We'll just say that. And uh, I'm going, I'm going to the restroom and a, a vendor from another company, I'll just say a competing company. I won't say who walks in and I'm sitting there, you know, just taking care of my business. And he kind of leans over and he's like, I hear you're buying, you know, these Apple products. And I said, yeah. He's like, well, you know, you might want to think about that. And I'm like, wait a minute, I'm going to the bathroom here. <laughs> I, I, I don't, to this day, I don't know that he actually was going to the bathroom. He may have just followed me in there. I mean, it got me in a moment of vulnerability. I almost wanted to turn, you know, just, no, no, I wouldn't do that. But <laughs> See, th that takes getting caught with your pants down to a whole nother level. <laughs> yes, yes. I mean, never mind you followed a hooker into the bathroom. But that's exactly. Another, yeah. <laughs> It just gets worse. It gets worse as we go, folks. All right. <laughs> I, I, I do have to say, I can't knock their hustle. That's their job. And, you know, yeah. they provide necessary services and products to us. And I have taken up some, you know, that have um, just sent some information. You know, they may have said, hey, I've been trying to contact you for six times. Are you sure you're okay? You know, see the little catchy things like that have caught my attention. And um, I've actually moved on a couple of them, but not very many. I like that. Yeah, the personalized approach is good. Or also if there's a, for me, I when I see content that's interesting, like a webinar right. or a white paper, something that's like, oh, this is just some information. And it's not like, here's our product, buy it. But it's more like, here's right. something that some schools are doing to help with this. Yes. And maybe you can, yeah, that I'll, I'll read those yeah. a lot more or watch those yeah. videos. Just don't and, manhandle me. Oh, yeah. no. But you know, I've gotten some that have gotten pretty slick. And they're like, Oh, Adam, I saw this thing of you on YouTube. There was this poetry slam that you did. It was so awesome. Oh, no. And, and, and I'm like, oh, tell me more. <laughs> yeah. yeah. See. Oh, I'd like to look for your poetry slam, Adam. You, you, uh, uh, just be ready to blush on that one, Tracy. Um, <laughs> okay. it's, pretty, it's out there. So uh, we always start with, of course, a not so serious, serious question for our guests. And our not so serious, serious question comes this time. It's about the beaches. Uh, and it is. What are, who has the best beaches? Is it Alabama, Mississippi, or Florida, Tracy? I would say Florida, even though I'm right here. <gasps> Hot take. I would say Florida. Oh, boy. The water's prettier. People don't understand that we have the murky water, and not necessarily because it's dirty, but because the muddy Mississippi River dumps straight into it. So, you know, the waters in Florida are much prettier, but, you know, we have really nice beaches as well. Okay. There goes the hot take, everybody. <laughs> What about the best football? Uh oh. Um, I'm probably not the best person. I'm going to say go Saints. Yeah. <laughs> like we're right next door to New Orleans, so I have to root for them. That's go with a G E A U X, folks yes, out there listening. That's yes. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's a reason why uh, Alabama always thanks God for Mississippi because they're spelling. Uh, but that's 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 a topic for another day. <laughs> 
<laughs> so, so as we look at our jobs and the, the changing environment that we live in today, uh, I know uh, we were just talking about it kind of off air, the crazy things that can kind of happen that we have to juggle. But what is the one big thing that you think keeps you up at night um, in, in your job? Um, that I won't live up to the expectation that everything is an emergency and you need it right now. That concerns mm -hmm. me. Um, the, the process that we usually, um, use for acquiring new equipment, something that's brand new is, you know, buy one or two, you know, use it for a while, um, establish some proof of concept. We don't have that time now. And the mm. pressure is constantly on me. You know, we don't have time. I said, well, we don't know it works. And, you know, that's in addition to using lots of taxpayer money on something that's kind of risky. You know, we know that it works, but we don't know if we need to buy a different uh, configuration of the device. And usually buying one or two you know, can help you with that. So I'm just kind of concerned about things like that. A new programs working on our network or with our filter, you know, making sure those are the things that keep me up at night. The pressure is on to get it all in as soon as possible. And I understand that, but as soon as possible, maybe December. So, yeah. You yeah. know, I, we've, we've asked a lot of guests that question. I've never thought about that, but that compressed timeline, you're right on point, Tracy. We usually take, you know, we'll go months with a pilot or con proof of concept, like you're saying, and then maybe do a gradual rollout or maybe scale back. You're talking, you know, a month or two and you're, you're having to turn it on right now and just get everything mm -hmm. out there, devices, whatever you're putting out there. Um, yeah. And then having those that are requesting it understand that, you know, it's not just us slowing the process down. We're requesting as quickly as we can. And just like Adam and I were talking about this one particular vendor that we've been dealing with and trying to get in contact with, and they're just very slow to respond. That's happening with a lot of uh, our vendors. They may respond quickly, but they're waiting on manufacturers and they're waiting on things, you know, to get on the boat mm -hmm. to come, you know, across over yep. to the U.S. I mean, there are all kinds of factors and variables that um, make this process imperfect and it slows it down much slower than it was before. And um, even that wasn't as quick as we wanted. Mm -hmm. So those are the things that keep me up at night. Whether we're doing the right thing, nobody knows. That concerns me. But um, as long as our hearts are in the right place and we're constantly reevaluating, I'm okay with that and I can sleep at night. It's just the, you know, trying to get stuff in to make sure we have what we need to move forward with this and the best that we think. That's always uh, one of those dangerous things because I definitely feel you on that. Uh, you know, and it's, it's, that trick, it's that tricky, slippery slope that we're in where you may have some concerns and it's like, okay, do I need to uh, formally state these concerns uh, just to have that CYA just in case this goes yeah. south? Uh, yeah. because, you know, just like we're talking about with the vaccine, you know, they want to get it out, you know, as soon as possible but we don't know what are going to be the long-term consequences of this immediate fix. So I definitely understand you on those, uh, you know, being all things to all people, getting something out right now, what is it going to impact later? What's going to break because you added this feature in here. Yeah. Um, you know, that's, that's always that issue that we run into yeah. in technology. And then they're like, technology isn't making it work. And it's like, <laughs> Okay. 99%. Them. We haven't tried this. And so when it doesn't work, you know, it's, it's going to ultimately be the technology department's fault for not making it work. And I said, I want y'all to understand we haven't tried this. We don't know. And so I still don't think that everybody gets it. And <laughs> But it is what it is. We're gonna push on. We're gonna and I, and of course that stuff doesn't break right at the you know at an opportune time. It's always about an hour before you have to have that important virtual meeting or yeah. two in the mor <laughs> two in the morning <laughs> when like the whole network goes down. You wake up to a bunch of emails and calls. That's always a fun time mm -hmm. for that. Um, speaking of like kind of the volatility, I know the fall is going to be a different picture there in all schools. So what are some things you guys are doing? What are you preparing for for the fall uh, in Gulfport in terms of? What's school going to look like and how are you helping assisting with it with technology? So we've developed multiple plans over the um, past few months and, you know, weekly the plans could change. But essentially right now, um, what we're looking at is starting school um, in early August as close to normal as possible, knowing that normal has 
you know, completely gone out the window. So where we can do the uh, social distancing, uh, we're going to uh, do that. And then, um, uh, Adam, you're throwing me off. Oh, oh, no, okay. you said one of the buzzwords. You, you said social a, distancing, <laughs> so that was one of the buzzwords. But, but, but she also said new normal. She almost said new normal. I was excited because that's on all the other shows we've had that mentioned, both of those mentioned every time. So that's good. That's why we were laughing. Cool. We're all on the same. You didn't know. You didn't know, but that's good. You, you, you played well into it, Tracy. Thank you. Okay. So, um, and, 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 and then we'll have the kids in as safely as possible. And we're concerned about the safety of the, you know, the students and the adults. And so, we're going to ask that everybody wear masks um, to school. We also understand that everybody's not going to be comfortable sending their children back to school and not all employees are going to be comfortable um, going back to school. And so we have contingency plans. We are including um, virtual learning opportunities, of course, for um, students who don't want to come or, you know, are unable to come because they're weak in immune system or, you know, whatever. Um, or if they're homeschooled, have chosen homeschool, and because of all of this, we have a, um, we've um, created a virtual learning coordinator position, and we have um, opened up for some virtual uh, learning teacher leads who will provide some synchronous learning to those students who are at home, um, and also um, some um, teachers assistants and other teachers who will serve as moderators for that um, process during class because in our model, the teacher is going to be in front of students in the class, as well as, which is why we're saying synchronous, as well as teaching those students at home. And so that's quite a bit of multitasking that would have to go on. So we need someone there who can like moderate the chat and make sure that they're monitoring the students in the Zoom room. Mm -hmm. And then of course, having some office hours and following up with the students and doing some wellness checks as well. That is, um, that is the plan right now, but we understand that the way that the uh, numbers are rising here, we may not even start um, the way that we're planning um, because the way the numbers are rising, we were thinking it might be October because you know the sun's going to kill it and we're going to be okay. On oh, it. yeah. I heard, and, um, I heard that. <laughs> yeah, that's just not true. Um, and, um, you know, even though we're not having uh, COVID parties where we're trying to see who's going to get it, it seems like we're all having it. In Alabama. Um, yeah. 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 So um, at, we're, we're planning to do, um, you know, a little more formal and a little more planned um, remote virtual type environment should we go out um, and, you know, providing students with virtual learning kits, which includes a Chromebook, you know, headphones, um, you know, some rules and regulations and any other manipulatives that they may need. And you know some guidelines about creating a virtual space at home and how that will look. So you know, mom and dad won't be arguing in the background or trying to yeah. shut down the um, teaching and learning because they don't agree with what the teacher is saying. So we have that in place, but we also have another plan which could involve you know um, uh, going every other day. And okay. so we we have several plans in place, but right now we're pushing forward toward as traditional as possible with the mask and um, uh, CDC protocols in place, um, sanitation and all of that. Um, and then, you know, making it possible for those students that won't be in school to be able to participate virtually. So that's what it's looking like here um, as of Monday. Um, so <laughs> next week, you know, who knows? It may be something totally different. And this is being filmed on July 2nd, y'all. So if you hear this later, well, but Tracy and her group will know much better by the time this comes out, probably where, where they're headed. But yeah, you have to be prepared for almost every scenario yeah. and, and just pivot in the direction of wherever it is at that moment when, you know, August or late August comes around. So, And yeah. we also understand that we may be faced with things that we have not even thought of yet. Like who thought we would be here now? Mm -hmm. So we are mentally prepared to readjust in case something pops off that we're not prepared for. So I think that's one of the biggest things. We have to be open-minded and flexible throughout this. If you're very, very rigid and, you know, have to have all this structure, you're probably losing your mind right now. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and speaking of flexibility, um, yeah. as we start looking at being able to support our our staff, uh, support our, our parents with this new environment that we're in, you know, what do you 
think your professional learning is going to look like, or I'm pretty sure you're already kind of worked through some, some various scenarios. So what is your professional learning going to look like for this upcoming year? Uh, you know, not just for staff, but also for our parents, because, you know, they're going to be asked to support their yeah. uh, students at home. Yeah. So um, I have to be honest, I haven't um, planned a lot of, um, and have not put a lot of uh, thought into how that will look for parents, although I've started jotting down a um, after hour schedule to, um, you know, have a help desk, field calls. So each member in our, de our department um, would have a day or evening where they would field calls until like nice. nine o'clock to help support. You know, we're all there during the day. And so somebody, even the secretary or the receptionist, and sometimes the custodian, you know, they've learned and picked up things and can, you know, are able to help support parents. You know, the superintendent and assistant superintendent and the school secretaries can also help. We didn't get a lot of phone calls with, um, you know, needing tech assistance. Those that we did, it was usually about connecting to their router at home or things like that. And we would, you know, help direct them to the code that's on there or tell them, you might want to check with your internet service provider. The students did pretty um, well with um, being able to maneuver in that environment and help their parents out. And so we were proud of that. However, we know that may not be the norm and, it, you know, there will be some other things that um, could come up that the students are not able to help with or the parents are not comfortable with believing the students, you know, and how to fix it. So we're just planning to be there to support the way that we normally have been supporting and then provide them with any guidelines or any instruction that we can. You know, if we need to get on a Zoom call or uh, we need to do team viewer to kind of, you know, go into their machines. Um, if it's a district owned device, then, you know, we will be happy to do that. And we do some of that right now. I mean, I had to go drop a, um, a, a Chromebook cable off to a grandmother's house and pick up another <laughs> one because the wrong one was attached to it. Then I ended up having a little meeting with some kids out there. And I'm like, where are you masking? Grandma, what's going on? <laughs> so, you know, we do what we need to do to make it happen. It takes a village for sure. You know, it does. It does. I've been doing, uh, I've done some virtual PD recently for some schools and it's interesting because it's a full day. They want me like, we want you to come in for the full day virtually. And I'm like, I'm not going to put any teacher in front of a screen for six hours. So no. I staggered yeah. up, split it up, try to do all the yeah. things that we're trying to model our teachers to do when they're yes. having to do virtual, but it's hard. You don't get that, you don't get that same reaction, that same feel that you do in a classroom. So I know teachers are struggling with it. I know I am as a provider yeah. of PD, it's same thing. You can't really bounce off of them, you know, get the yeah. feel, right. you know. And, how. and Carl, you talked about this the other day, but uh, Zoom butt is real. Zoom butt yeah. is real. Yeah. yeah. Not, not, not Zumba, Zoom butt. Zoom yes. Butt. I'm sitting <laughs> too long. Yeah. Yes. Zoom fatigue. Um, so let me ask you this, Tracy. So out of all these, um, have you picked up or have you heard your teachers picking up any type of new tools or strategies that have happened? Like as a result of this, you know, they were kind of, we were thrown into it in the spring. Is there a couple of things that you've heard your teachers say like, wow, this is something maybe I'll change going forward with my teaching practice. Or has there been a couple of ideas or strategies or tools that they're using that you think they may use more now going forward? I think they, um, many of them are planning to use more digital uh, tools. Um, you know, they were already using some, but they see that um, the way that they were using them when we went out and to teach remotely is something that they could utilize, you know, all the time. So not just the pandemic, but the pandemic and beyond. And so um, not just to provide, you know, the synchronous learning, but they can also provide, you um, um, some recordings of their lessons using Screencastify and other things and put those up as resources. So instead of just putting links of documents and um, websites, they can actually put up recordings of them teaching and um, uh, modeling lessons and explaining things and, you know, putting that up. And so building a library of resources from themselves. And I see that they're, they're, they're doing that now but that's something that they are um, seeing that they can implement, you know, um, throughout the year, not just for their students, but also to share with other teachers. So as a part of their professional growth there, you know, so we have a team of teachers and their job is now because of this is to create videos um, um, for those standards that the district is most deficient in for their grade level and subject. And they're starting with those and we're going to put those in a, a location so that all teachers can utilize it. So they're modeling how this lesson should look, 
how to get over these hurdles with teaching your students and maybe that those particular standards will no longer be standards where we're deficient and we will you know continue to show academic growth and then after they do that they're going to go back and do the same thing for all other standards and so we are really looking at building our own digital curriculum that we can eventually you know share with everybody so that that's just one of the ways other ways they you know they're they picked up some additional digital tools that we may have been um training them on or you know put out there for them to use that they didn't find important at the time but now they see the benefit of it you know some mm -hmm. didn't pick up google classroom right away although we've been doing it for three or four years now they see the benefit of it not just for remote learning but also for daily use right. in their classroom so yeah um just some of the innovative ideas that other teachers have been using some have picked up on and say oh i can do that too I, I, this is probably not the best analogy, but I was having a discussion with a leader, an ed tech leader who's doing the you know, same thing. We've been training our teachers for, for six, seven, eight years on these tools in some cases. And it's almost like you're sitting at your house and you see some wildfires off in the distance. And you're like, okay, that's way over there. I see some smoke, but I'm not that worried about it. Now it's in their backyard. And all of a sudden you're like, wow, I better pick this up, you know? And so, and I think a lot of, there's some teachers, of course, that are like well-prepared and it's smart that you've, you've leveraged those teachers, those model teachers. And I think that's a great idea for schools out there listening. Take advantage. You have a lot of internal resources, you know, have them kind of curate those things and spread them. Cause a lot of teachers will listen to each other a lot more than they would yeah. me or you or any administrator. Right. Yeah. yeah. That's a great, that's a great idea. Yeah. Yeah. I know for, well, for we me, we, to, go ahead. Oh, there we, we struggled uh, to really get some of our administrators to move over to OneDrive. They really wanted to uh, have things on their, uh, on the local drive, on their H drive and G drives and all this stuff. And then they're like, oh my gosh, I can't get to my documents. Yeah, that's why we were trying to get you to go to OneDrive for the past four years. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they don't always see our vision for it. And we can't always articulate that vision. We just have a feeling of where it's going and we right. get hits or whatever. And so, um, Yes, yeah, it's, it's kind of hard to get them on board unless they're used to you. You know, some of my staff say, I don't know why you're doing this, but we've learned to just go with it because it always ends up, you know, right. And it, for some reason, they, <laughs> and it's funny, they're like, I don't know why, but I'm going to just do it because you know what you're talking about. But they don't see that because they have a different set of responsibilities and um, challenges to overcome. And so we just kind of handle that delicate matter as um, carefully as we can. And I think because of everything that's going on, they're like, ah, oh, well, that makes sense now. That, that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> and you just smile and go, well, wow, see, okay, good. That's great. You just can move forward finally. Yeah. Yeah. Cause, yeah, it can't be that I told you so. It's kind of like, oh, okay, I'm going. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you see the benefit of that. Yeah. That is like good. That saying, is good. <laughs> So we kind of uh, hit on this a, a little bit at the very beginning about how, uh, you know, being all things to all people, and sometimes you, you don't live up to those expectations at times. Right. Or with all the craziness going on, um, you know, you, you can't have enough devices for, for your students or you have to roll this new platform out and, you know, you get beat up. You know, we all get beat up with this job. So, and it could have the tendency to disrupt your life. Right. But... We're asking all of our guests to give some words of encouragement to the listeners out there. All those people who have subscribed and gave us five stars. <laughs> Subscribe below. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what could you tell them to keep them from becoming or keep them undisrupted? Um, one, stay the course. Um, j j just stay the course it, and, and try to understand that. And it's hard. It's, it's hard for me that it's, it's not personal. Um, it is, um, you know, uncomfortableness for everybody. And so stay the course, um, take care of you. You know, a lot of times when I leave work, I leave the email there as well. And so I know that if something, and I, you know, this is what we say, if something pops off, they'll text me, they'll, they'll say, Hey, check your email. You know, self care is very, very important. If not, then, um, you, you will find yourself, you know, in that sunken place with this. Um, surround yourself with people who believe in what you do. Um, your team, you all have to be on the same page. You have to motivate and encourage and protect each other. And so if, if, you're, if you have like one vision, you know, about where you're going, then you have one voice. So when they go to and ask me, 
and they're not comfortable or satisfied with the answer and then they go ask a tech or whatever we're all saying the same thing because we're all believing the same thing and that's just comfort there you know if nobody else believes in us or protects us then our little core group does and i think um that's important with um with all of this and you know part of it is developing thick skin you know um, and, 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 and I may have thick skin today, but tomorrow I may just lose it, you know, because all of this other stuff, you know, because there's stuff outside of school that, um, a lot of us are dealing with, you know, just with the pandemic itself, that's not school related. And so when you take all of that into account, you know, you got a big hot mess going on. So, um, develop thick skin, you know, stay, stay the course be encouraged and motivated, surround yourself with people who are like-minded, they understand the vision and where you're going, and, you know, uh, they're able to um, uphold you and laugh. We just have a good time sometimes. Sometimes we're questioning, like, do y'all work? Yeah, we work and we have fun, and if we're not talking, you know, we got to concentrate on writing this down or reading this and understanding this right now, but in a minute, we're still going to be yelling down the hall um, at each other, and so... um, uh, that that helps too. That helps keep us sane. And so, yeah, we get beat up all the time. Um, but you know, trying to explain it away, you get tired of explaining. You get tired of saying it's technology. Yeah. It worked an hour ago. It ain't working right now. I really don't know what's going on. That doesn't mean that I don't know what I'm doing. I just don't know why it's not working. <laughs> Let's just unplug it and and reboot it and see what happens. Yeah, we are uh, we are definitely masochists in this in this industry. We like the pain. We like the because it's nothing ever always works all the time. But uh, and well, like, what's wrong? Uh. <laughs> and it's like it's not working. And all eyes are on you. Like oh, they all turn. Why, yeah. why, why, why you why you can't fix this right now? And like, yeah. we've yes. been failed. <laughs> yeah, my, my trick is to open up as many windows as possible while I'm doing it. <laughs> And they go, hmm, interesting. (laughs) (laughs) Get one of those matrix windows that just has the letters flying and people are like, wow. She's like, oh yeah, I see that. I see what they're doing. Wait, what? (laughs) I know you (laughs) don't. Well, uh, the students and staff there at at Gulfport are definitely uh, lucky to have you, Tracy. So Dr. Tracy Daniel Hardy, thank you so much for joining us today on Undisrupted. Um, I hope you have a great, uh, whatever the school year is going to look like. And it sounds like whatever it is, you're prepared for just about anything thrown your way. So thank you so much for joining us today. Well, thank you guys for having me. All right, everybody. Uh, we're heading into a volatile fall for sure. This has been the Undisrupted Podcast. He's Adam. He's Carl. And remember, we're better together. And we are better Undisrupted. undisrupted. This podcast is made possible by the generous support of Amazon Web Services.